Let's check out Thailand, dude. His, country is the His new new country, uh, new video, man. The world by storm. Will I do my best? For I used to talk a lot about Thailand on the stream, and I've been in Thailand two times, and Thailand is Thailand to me, as I always said, is this like it's you have a weight uh, how do you sell a, a weight thingy and you have insane beauty and insane sadness like what i felt in thailand is this uh, divergence between amazing cool great people but on the other side just so much pain and suffering and and fakeness and shit in. like this hi your video yes I am. So if you're feeling crabby, I've been there, Krabby Island. Phuket. Phuket. Oh, dude, this shit right here. What if you go there, wait. Time it is. Wait, wait, wait. I can't go back. Sorry. Phuket. Look, this is the old. Um, this is the old uh, English rock from the uh, James Bond movie. But if you actually go here in real life, it's so dirty because. A lot of tourists, like hundreds, they walk in here and they make pictures here. And because the tourists are walking in this water all day long, it's super fucking dark and shitty and stuff. This is when there's no tourists, man. It's really dirty when you go there because of all the fucking idiots. It is porn. Porn. It's time to learn geography. Now! Let's go. Due to continuity issues, we have to film this out of sequence. Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Get your jug if now. I don't like shirts like that. Now.com. It's not selling out if it's your brand. They had to Thailand, close down actually. The land of smiles. And it is also the home of Julie, our next co-host. Say hi, Julie. How you doing? Yeah. Oh, also. Be normal. Be normal. Don't put that thing in chat. Don't do it. Just be normal. That's why girls don't talk to you. Because you're like that. Oh, so we got uh, Anya the fucking and video. Uh, so They're also going to be in this episode. Ah, oh, fuck. It's over. Okay, you can do it. Later you can do it. The, uh, sure. So you'll see them. Uh, anything you want to say to the subscribers about Thailand? You should visit. Also. <laughs> <laughs> We're not Taiwan. Don't get it, don't get it confused. No. No. All right? Not confused. Let's pad see you it, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, look how much this they channel has improved, dude. They are the crossroads of the Sinosphere and Indosphere and the Malay world. And they have the inland mountains and the coastal waters. And there's so much going on. First of all, yeah. the country is located in Southeast Asia on what is commonly referred to as the Indo-Chinese Peninsula, bordering four other countries and is shaped like Dumbo the Flying Elephant with a really long disfigured trunk. In that long disfigured... <laughs> <laughs> this fucker, <laughs> he just goes like... <clears throat> Tommy K, I'm not attracted to Asian girls. Nice, amazing. That's great. Oh, you have a Maserati profile picture, two times even. Not, thank you for sharing that. I was just them. I was wondering what you thought about Asian girls. Thank you for sharing that, dude. Trunk. They have a long bicoastal access section on the Kra Isthmus, shared with Myanmar, that straddles the Andaman Sea to the west and the Gulf of Thailand to the east. This trunk squeezes at its narrowest point near the city of Ratchapkiri Khan. This gives me flashbacks to Hoi Fork because this is the area where you always tried to push the Japanese and there was no supply. Seven miles or 11 and you could always get uh, That's not even the narrowest section, though. At the very end of the border with Cambodia at the Trat province, they have a section that is only 450 meters wide until you hit the border from the coast. Oh, and speaking Speaking of provinces, the country is made up of 76 of them. 76, Tung Jesus. Keep in mind, all the provinces are also named after much. their capitals or namesake cities, so you don't have to memorize anything extra. Also, each province has its own flag. Wow. They look pretty cool, usually based on Buddhist undertones. In addition, there are two. You are not allowed to go into Thailand with Buddhist tattoo. If you go to the airport and you have an open tattoo of Buddha, they're literally going to be, fuck you, go away. Two special We're not letting you in, you fuck. cities that act with the same administrative level as a province, the capital, Bangkok, and Pattaya. The capital and largest city of the country of course is Pattaya the is where the bad shit happens dude mega cities with a larger metropolitan population at around 14 million as of 2022 here of course you can find the two busiest airports Bangkok's Subarnabhumi International Airport on the southeast side and Don Mueang International on the north side of the city Bangkok also has their own port on the Chao Phraya River guys no offense but the ladyboy joke is getting hella fucking old man port is at Lim Chabang at the Bay of Thailand from there if we don't include all the cities that could be classified as connected Thank you, Life Hacks. Thank you, man. Like
Aburi, Chomburi, Bangkok changed its name the recently? What? The cities would be Hat Yai in the south, close to Malaysia, and Nakhon Ratchasima, just a bit up northeast from Bangkok. Any Speaking of which, the country has about 1,430 islands, and Phuket being the largest one. Phuket, the most area. beautiful place in the world. As I always say, man, my favorite place in the world. The the Phuket is so beautiful, man. Rail lines that reach every but hell, I'll fuck you overrun with uh, neighbors, tourists. Except Myanmar, there used to be a line now known as the Death Railway, but it was discontinued after World War II. Is Patai already? Today, no, Patai is amazing. Patai is so good. Two international you just have to streets, eat it from Cambodia, a real Thai person, not like Penal some white cook in fucking Manchester. And the other with Malaysia here on these incredibly small rocks in the middle of the sea known as Kokra and Losin Island. Losin has a small lighthouse and that's about it. Oh, and it's not a dispute, but Thailand also has this weird <gasps> I have to, man, dude, what the fuck is wrong with some people? Look at this guy. You see this? Obitrix. Let's take a look at Obitrix real quick, chat, shall we? He's brand new today, okay? He followed 60 minutes ago. He's a brand new guy on the stream, and now look what he... Like, what the fuck is your problem, dude? Are your parents not home and you feel lonely or some shit, dude? Three pagodas past that Thank you, Klang Traumbed, man. Grüße, mein Bruder. Grüße gehen raus. Thank you, man. Schreib morgen Abitur, na, dann lernen wir. Keep in mind, oftentimes, Thai people also divide their country into four to six cultural regions. What are these cultural regions, Julie? They are the northern Thailand, Lana, and the northern eastern Thailand, Isan, central Thailand, Siam, and southern Thailand. What? Ta <laughs> Tam Tamra Linga? Yeah. Wow, you never use that word. No. Wow. So how do you say southern Thailand in Thai? It's a little Thai. Yeah. Correct me if anything is wrong. Okay. Now, also, in regards to Bangkok, Thais actually do not call it Bangkok. All right, so uh, how do you say Bangkok in Thai? Okay, so, Kung Thep Mahanakon Amon Ratana Gosin Mahintara Ayutthaya Mahadilok Hop Noparat Rashatani Budirom Udom Rashaniwet Mahasatan Amon Piman Awatan Satit Saka Tatia Witsanu Kambasit. <laughs> Literally the longest name of any city in the world. Oh, really? Sorry, one sec. Damn, that's actually the longest name of a city. Many years, Bangkok I would just call it Bangkok. Visited city with over 22 million tourists, meaning that for the first time in the 21st century, they dethroned Paris. Wow, that's insane. Bangkok dethroned the tourist numbers of Paris. Wow, well, no wonder Paris is... Uh, it's a piece of poop of a Gucci belt, man. Have you, have you ever been to Paris, man? Pa Paris is so overrated, man. Uh, damn, that's insane. I never thought that. Wow. But Bangkok is insane, man. Crazy, crazy city. And we have great temples. Okay, enough about Bangkok, though. Another thing you have to understand is that Thailand is administratively a constitutional monarchy. Who is the king, Julie? King Maha Ratchalatlong. He's kind of an asshole. His dad was really beloved. Uh, when he died, I was with Thai people in China, and they cried their ass off for two weeks. And this guy is a fucking cunt. He lives most of the time in Germany. He loves Germany, and he lives in, in Munich a lot. And he just uses all his money for, for a lot of bad stuff. Gone or He's not... Ten. He's not the best of dudes. Taking the throne after his father died. But his father was very beloved. I remember the Thai people told me about him. The, the king would always, he would go to the, he would always uh, take care of the Thai people. He would always drive to the land and talk to the peasants and be like, well, how can I help you? He, he will always connect with the people. Well, this guy is just in Germany all the time. He's believed Fucking to be hookers. one of the richest monarchs in the world. And since 2020, has pretty much spent most of his time living in Bavaria, Germany after yeah. the pandemic. As a constitutional monarchy, all government nice king, affairs dude. are handled by the National Assembly and Prime Minister since 1932. Nonetheless, even though the king's role is restricted by the constitutional law, he still holds a huge level of power and influence mostly Thanks to the Thailand. Laissez Les majesté laws. Yes. This means that people who criticize the king, his family, and even their pets can face heavy charges if it's strong or not. No comment. Well, I'm not gonna see Thailand again. No comment. <laughs> Moving on. Much of what is now in oh, Thailand shit. started to develop about a thousand years ago when this person, Pa Kun Singh in Talatip, crowned himself the first king during the Sokotai era in 1238. Later, the Ayutthaya kingdom formed and eventually unified them in 1448 under King, how do you say that? Rameswan? Lameswan. Lameswan. Yeah. The northern areas known as Lana had their own things going on, divided into five kingdoms. Long 
Long story short, they had a bunch of wars with Burma, what is now Myanmar. The Portuguese were the first Europeans to come in. They called it Siam. Over time, their global interaction developed more than yet. They never in became colonized. We've never been colonized. Woo! Well, there was one. Well, you are now. <laughs> if you ever go to Thailand, you, <laughs> you, you take a look, man. Time you only see a bunch of fat white dudes with Thai wives, man. That's all you see in Bangkok, well, dude. Japan got really close to war in World War II, but it was like... All right, I'm taking over you. You're going to be part of my empire. Consider who is surrounding us. That might not be a good idea. Oh, yeah. Okay, but you have to give me free passage and join us against the Allied powers. Okay, fine, sure, whatever. Do it. I officially declare war on the U.S. and Britain. Oh, I am not delivering this news to them. Hey, allies. I oh, did the ambassador actually not do that? That's very clever, man. Good man. I totally didn't mean to declare war on you guys. It was just a joke to make it look like we weren't against Japan. Wait, you declared war on me? No, oh, I wasn't even paying attention, but uh, okay, sure. Woo! Saved by indifference. <laughs> hey guys, remember Aaron? Uh, he was in the Sullivan Talk episode. Haha. <laughs> and yeah, what? they got by. The yeah, what? never colonized, even with Japan. Well, in any case, with six UNESCO heritage sites, over 40,000 temples, Thailand is never short of notable- I've been to one of these temples, man, and I will never forget me and uh, a, f a friend. We, we walk around the temple, and there was a lot of people, and it was very old and stuff, and you hear this singing. And we go into this big temple, and there's like all these monks. Like you imagine monks, you know, bald with glasses, so just like you, Tommy, huh? So funny. And they were just praying, and we would just sit, sit down and look at them praying for hours, man. That was so interesting. That was a whole different and world. And with that, uh, Som, why don't you take this, the notable places of Thailand. Som, you got this. We're out. Okay, so my most favorite place in Thailand, PP. That PP Island, bro. I talk about this shit so much on stream. We talked about it so much. PP Island is so insane. You take a boat and you take a left here and you go to the Hidden Monkey Beach, man. It's like on the south of Thailand. It's a very beautiful it's insane. island. But unfortunately, just full of fucking tourists, man. And the one, the <laughs> chat, calm down, calm down. Jesus Christ, chat. Calm down, okay? The one tip I have for you. PP Island closes at 5 p.m. for for uh, tourists that are not living on, uh, not sleeping on the island. That means by 5 p.m. you have to take a boat home. If you ever go there with like a girl or something, okay, if, if you go with your mom or something, you have to book a hotel on PP Island because 5 p.m. all the tourists leave and you have the beach on your own. And you just chill in the most beautiful beach on earth all on your own man Chiang it's so Lai, sick i have old videos on my old phone man it's Chiang insane Lai. that's like a place that you can actually visit like a lot of elephant they have like an elephant what is that called like sanctuary and you can also like yeah, and also very important they talk about that if you ever go to thailand don't fucking do the elephant rights these elephants are treated very badly and you should not support you that business at, at all um, in a mountain in the north. Ayutthaya was capital city of Thailand like 100 years ago before they moved to Bangkok. Or old temple building, old palace. On the west is um, the city called Ganjanaburi that wow, has a lot of beautiful like waterfalls. Nice. In the central of Thailand is Thank called Thank you, Noble. Thank you, man. That's like a city that's monkey everywhere. It's pretty interesting. Oh, chat city. People are not going to rob you. It's going to be monkey to try to steal stuff from you. It's really funny, but you got to be careful if you go to that city. My favorite place that I always go is Called Khao San. San Road, man. That is. Oh, I, I have stories about this road. That is Gomorrah on Earth, man. If you ever want to go to Gomorrah, you go to that road. It's just sex, drugs, and alcohol, man. No rock and roll. This this road is just pure fucking insanity, road, dude. And then there's a lot of street food there on that um, street. You just visit. Thank you, Som. Well, we are just getting started because part of the reason Thailand Thanks is for so the tip. colorful no is problem. because naturally it just is that way. That means we move on to the next segment. So thanks to its location in the tropics, Thailand is no stranger to extreme nature conditions. You'll definitely see the side of Thailand if visiting. Thailand is located at the convergence of three major tectonic plates, the Australian, Indian, and Eurasian plates, with numerous fault lines cracking mostly throughout the west and northern parts of the country. These fault zones are essentially what create the shield of mountain ranges, like the Dangrek, the Chabun, the Dona, and the Thai Highlands, where you can also find the highest peak of the country, Doi Intanon. In between these mountains, you have two incredibly lush and fertile flat areas, the central plain, known as the Chao Praia River Valley, and to the east, Korak Plateau, where you can find the longest river fully within Thailand. 
Thailand, the Chi River. Otherwise, Thailand shares the mighty Mekong River on the border with Laos. Did I just fuck in the streets in between shooting heroin? Jeez, we're not in America here. Okay, calm down. But if you if you ever were in Thailand, man, they literally try to pull you into their uh, establishments, man. And important, another tip, look, it's okay to, if you want to pay for sex, it happens, why the fuck? It's very important that when you actually plan to have the sexy time with a uh, sex worker, as you say nowadays, in Thailand, to not take more money than you need. You have nothing with you. You give your phone to your friend, you touch nothing. You have to 50 fucking euros or whatever, 5,000 uh, baht or something, and that's it. But go in with nothing else. Very important. Largest Listen to Uncle lake Tommy. In Thailand is way down south, Songkla Lake, which is divided into three parts, and it does have an opening to the Bay of Thailand. Always use protection. The bottom part by the town of Songkla, which is why the lake has. No, not fifty. I, I don't remember. I think it was twenty. I, me and the boys were walking around, and we were shy. We would never do something like this. But we always, uh, we were wondering in a respectful way. Nothing. Yeah, right. We were wondering how much would be a blowjob. And then my friend, what is his name? I forgot his name. Dude, he will go up to them and ask how much is a blowjob. And it was 20 euros, kind of. 20 euros. Partly salty, Which is insanely water. fucking Otherwise, up in the mountains in the west, cheap, the Sinekarin right? Dam is the largest reservoir sad, in the country dude. at over 17 billion cubic meters of water. Finally, the country is split up mostly into two separate climate zones. The upper part of the nation mostly lies. And I remember when I was in Thailand, what was very... What you saw every day was these washing houses. It was a house, and there was 20 girls in front. And they will be, come in, come in. And what they do is they put you into a bathtub and they clean you and then you bunga bunga. And that was really, and there would be so many men going in there, dude. It was really it's successful. Everybody would go in there. Tropical monsoon zone, whereas the Kra Isthmus falls in the tropical rainforest zone. The country has three main seasons throughout the year. The cool, you? No, dry. no, no. That just sounds actually nice. Yeah, I, I would never, I swear, I told you this many times, I would never do this in my life. I always felt sad about this, paying Paying for sex has always been said to me. It still makes... If some people want to do that, whatever the fuck, you know. Uh, but uh, I never did that. Between November and February, the hot season from March to May, and the monsoon season... Yeah, in Balcony, imagine you just go in there and you're like, can you wash me? And then... She washed you and then you just leave. <laughs> then why not? From June to October. During this time, the country it's is quite here. It's a very big culture there. On the east coast, where this this the west, uh, washing massage thing. Cyclones are for the southern hemisphere and Indian Ocean. That's what I mean. <laughs> they Asian wash Pacific. you. Typhoons. <laughs> Typhoons. <laughs> well, I just know that Thailand is very humid and a lot of mosquitoes. Yeah, I very, really very. You're gonna sweat your ass off. So when you go back to Thailand, I paid six or seven dollars for haircuts just for the scalp message. So I get it. Yeah, and Thai massage is on a whole nother level. I'll never forget. I was a group. I was in a group of like ten people, and one day we split up. And me and my boy, I don't know what we did. We probably just got washed. And the other eight went to Thai massage. They wanted to be, hey, I want to be massaged in a Thai massage, normal massage. Yeah, no fucking haha. -ha. And dude, I will never forget. In the evening, we met each other in the bar, and all eight of them they sat like this. And, and I'm like, dude, they must have been drugged off, right? And they said it was the best massage of their life. Life-changing. They will literally say life-changing. Like, their their muscles felt better. They, they could move better. They will just talk very positive about these massages. And till this day, I wonder what the fuck happened in these massage rooms. It's like... It oh, must have been. Died. But it's the motherland. I know. Well, in any case, Thailand is classified as newly industrialized country, making the eighth largest economy in Asia. Second, Southeast Asia after Indonesia. When it comes to business, Thailand is a, a real time massage and wonders. Good at it. Walking down the alleyways in Bangkok, you will find almost any type of vendor or profession, whether legitimate or questionable. For one, since the 80s, Thailand has designated 25% of land area of forest protection and 15% of timber production. In addition, they are huge on the electronics sector, gives me hope. making up almost a fifth of all exports. Now here's where things start to kind of get into the gray zone-ish area. For Thailand, much of the economic activity and numbers are hard to accurately calculate because there is an entire informal sector with underground market activity. True, this yeah, yeah. yeah. Shadow, shadow economy. economy. This could be anything from unreported or misreported vendor sales or illicit black and that's where you see the, the darker side of thailand i was talking about that there's a lot of darkness in thailand i was just watching uh you guys remember sea spiracy the documentary about fishing and stuff where they talk about thailand where they literally enslave people for the fishing market and if you talk shit they just throw you overboard and fucking kill you black market 
There's a lot of darkness in this country, man. That they don't want you to see, right? They want the tourists, man. Previous episodes overlapping three countries in Southeast Asia, which are widely known as the second largest opium producing area on Earth after the Golden Crescent. Later this week, I have a picture of my grandpa. I'm visiting him on Thursday, I think. Types of dealings and has been putting a heavier emphasis on a more positive sectors like tourism, the most obvious one. Thailand tourism industry makes up nearly a fifth of GDP today and is. I wonder if it's even more. It's gonna be 30 percent by 2030. Damn, that means, dude. Imagine how COVID-19 must have hit Thailand. Fuck me, dude. 30 percent by 2030. Instagram once ranked Thailand as one of the top ranked photograph locations on Earth. Thailand offers many different types of tourism, from medical, gastronomical, sort of the land of smile, even nature tourism. And uh, speaking of nature, here's uh, Gary Harlow to explain. The nature in Thailand is so beautiful. When I was there, we would often do hiking trips and just complete and other beauty, man. Never seen before beauty. We went to these, I don't remember where that was. Koravan? Koravan National Park? Is that is that a thing? Koravan National Park. Am I making this up? Erevan. Erevan. Erevan National Park. Dude, the most beautiful place on earth. Unbelievable, man. Dude, I was right here with uh, my then girlfriend, man. It was just, just paradise, man. Look at this shit. You just chill there, man, and you can jump in there and swim with the fishes, and it's, it's just fucking paradise, dude. Look at this shit. I, I will, you will jump down here and stuff. Just insane, man. Uh, Caleb's not here, but uh, you know, man, it's your turn. I gave you a chance. Oh, man. oh whoa! So, thanks to their tropical climate, Thailand is definitely brimming with creatures of all sorts. There are 156 national parks, 58 So beautiful, you have to go there, man. 67 non-hunting areas in 124. Thank you, Zeppi Ross. I've been to Erwan in the rainy seasons. Absolutely amazing, then. Yeah, I remember you can uh, book tents there and sleep there overnight. ...of the entire country's territory. Now, there's over 280 mammal species. Everything from leopards to Malaysian sun bears, gibbons, macaque... And I will never forget, never forget... What? Wait, wait. When he shows the map again. ...subspecies or tigers or... The most tigers. wild moment of my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> One sec, uh, when they show the map again. And speaking of felines, the Siamese cat actually originated here. I always thought it was Chinese, but no, it's here. It's here. Thailand. Now, here you can also find the smallest mammal on Earth. It's called the Kittis hognose bat. Or the now, Thailand claims to have the world's first and largest crocodile farm. Now, finally, we cannot forget the national animal, the Thai elephant. Today, there's about 3,500 elephants that are in captivity and about 1,000 estimated elephants The monkey snippets look now, good. Elephants are widely revered in Thailand and have played an important role in the country's history, and especially to the royal family where the white elephant is their symbol. And the king specifically keeps a small number of white Thai elephants alive. They're presented at special events and, and so forth and whatnot. El Thai people and elephants, they they like it. To, they, you know what I'm, you know what. Now it looks like I'm, I'm going to have to elephase my way out of here. <laughs> so I'm just saying, hey, what is happening to me? Thank you, Gary. Yes, Thailand's land is never short of provision. At one time, they were even the number one provider of rice in the world. And today, their cow homilet has been declared the world best rice seven times out of 13 world rice conferences. Wow. Thailand is heavy on gastro rice. diplomacy, which the government initiated in the Global Thai program launched in 2000. Too. Basically, it's a culinary diplomacy initiative that they fund in order to promote Thailand via food across the world. This is Clever. why you can find Thai restaurants in some of the most remote places on Everywhere, Earth. Everywhere, yeah. Even like the Arctic. Even though, like, I feel like in Germany, uh, in Leipzig, there's only Vietnamese restaurants. Vietnamese, sometimes Chinese. I never see Thais. To be, I don't know. And I only see Vietnamese Small everywhere. Bar, Norway has a Thai restaurant. To talk more about food, uh, why don't we bring up Anya? Anya! So, guys, sorry, I like Looney Tunes, so that's my commentary. Just don't sue me, okay? A state winter culture is so huge in Thailand. We never sleep on the street, off the street, in a small yeah, alley. Yeah, it's, it's really, really good. people Insane. going out. You know, like in Germany, if I walk around Germany and there's an old lady selling food. It's really sus in Germany. Like, what the fuck? Does she have a license? Should I call? Should I call Merkel? What the fuck's happening here? That's probably. Is that health regulated? Then you go to Thailand. No one gives a fuck, right? And it tastes 
amazing. It tastes so good. It's insanely uh, good, dude. Of cooking in. Like every region, they have their own food culture. Like in the north, do I get a, re I get a receipt? Kaosoi. I'm not buying Kaosoi this if I get like no a receipt. Kaosoi is like a noodle, curry noodle. On top of the noodle, very they're spicy gonna have though. The crispy noodle <sighs> on top of that noodle again. And when you eat it, you mix it all together with the potato oh. and red onion. Noodle on noodle. Noodle or noodle. The south, I would say the most spicy Thai food. They have like gang Thai prab, cooking, which is it could be ribs or ground pork. Central, I think the most normal thing that people know is green curry or red curry. Common guy, pad si iu, pad thai. Pad thai so sick, like the most man. popular ones you find at Thai restaurants yeah, are central. Like normal stuff. The not eat. I want to uh, share a story. The most wild moment ever. I shut this very often stream. <laughs> The most nature connected I ever was. We were on Phuket, right? And in the middle of Phuket, there's a little national park, a little jungle. And we Germans, when we go hiking or into nature, it's very civilized. When you go to a forest in Germany, there's always humans, everything is regulated, everywhere there's a fence. Germany full of regulation, right? Me and the boys, we go to this little um, jungle here, right? And there's this house and there's a guy, hello, hello, five dollar, five dollar, have fun, have fun. And we're like, is there a tour guide? Is there like a guided path? Is there like an arrow? Nothing. You just go into the fucking jungle. And we're walking and suddenly we're in a real jungle. Like a real jungle. And no one cares. No one pays attention to you. Very un-German. Very, very weird. There is no park range. It was like, are you hurting the plants? No one cares. So I, I'm jumping. Or there's, there's like a river. And I'm jumping over the river feeling so alive, man. Most alive time of my life. I'm jumping over the river. And I'm stopping to, to look around. And suddenly, I look right in front of me, and a big-ass black snake is drinking from the river. And there was this moment I will never forget. I'm like, I'm like, and the, the snake is like, and it just leaves. And I'm like, whoa, what the fuck, man? I just had this deep moment with this snake in the wilderness. He would have told me if I would have jumped one more, he would have bit me, man. And then, I swear to God, I'm not picking this up. What is that banana spider? And we had a guy in our group, uh, Johnny. He's actually a sub in this channel, no joke. He um, he is very afraid of spiders. So there's, so we're going deeper into the jungle, and there's these little paths, right? And suddenly Johnny starts screaming, "No! Ah, we have!" He has a literal panic attack. And suddenly, like in a movie, we realize something. We're like, "Ha ha! We're in the jungle. We're young. Ha 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 ha!" And suddenly, the whole group is like, "Wait a minute!" And we're looking around us. We're looking everywhere, and these fuckers, this fucker right here is everywhere. Everywhere, man. And and John has a legit panic, like legit, he's crying, man. And we have to save him, right? So, uh, me and the boys, we take uh, sticks, and we just run, and we just, ah, through the, so we can destroy all the nets and just run through. And John was behind us, ah! And dude, that was so real, right? Like, these fuckers were everywhere. I was, fuck, man. Ah, that was a good time though, man. Fuck, I miss these times. You guys need to get the fuck out there, man. Have these little student trips, man, with young people, travel the world, you will never forget this shit, man. My region. And the girls, guys, the girls. And they have like a million kind of papaya salad. The taste is gonna be like sweet and it comes with peanut. Or you can have isan or lao style. They are very poisonous? Wait, the banana spiders? Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh you make me... Oh, these, they were so big, man. Oh, fuck, dude. Oh, like, I like living in Germany where the most fucking scary thing is the fucking holes in the street and the politicians. Anyway. Anchovy fish sauce, which is, we call it tambrupala, or like fermented crab. Wow. Oh, Another dish Appreciate is it, like lard, and the they usually have it with sticky rice. The main dessert for me, I think, is mango sticky rice. Ooh. I have my favorite spot, Mewari. I think at Park Soi Tong Lo, that which is the best mango sticky rice in town for me. Thank you, Anya. Two other things we should also I'm mention. Traveling is one me kind of too, yeah. And there's always it's important for you young kids to to listen to me here. There's a big difference in young traveling and older traveling when you have a family and kids traveling is still fun but it's different when you're younger when you're like 22 and you have a backpack and you have a group of young people it's a very different feeling and you should not miss out on that you only live once and i always urge people if you can like university students watching try to talk to your university hey is there a way to get uh, one semester 
offshore somewhere, man. You should. Oh, I always will urge you to do that if you have the chance. And don't go to fucking America and France and UK. Go out, man. Go to Brazil, fucking wow. China, wow. Thailand. Go far nice. away, man. It's gonna change your mind, man. It's insane. Thank you, Tommy and Harv. Thank you, guys. Insect consuming. And you can find that in the street stalls. Pretty much. They get so mad when you make pictures of that. They're like, like, you pay me, you pay me. That you can just enjoy. Also, uh, Red Bull was invented in Thailand. Get Red Bull was invented in Thailand. Well, you got to stay awake stronger, a lot in that city. Way stronger. There was actually a report from Zenith International that stated Thai people consume more energy drinks than any other country in the world, averaging at about 11.4 liters wow. per person. That's four times more than us Americans. That's insane. Well, we do have a lot of energy. Wow. Speaking of the energy of the people, that brings us to the next segment, the... People. People. Anya, Som, Julie, answer the question, what is a Thai person? Go. Thai person is like kind. We smile a lot. That's why we call land of smiles. Religious? Yeah, we are religious. Yeah, we are. Being I think we are an empath. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does that mean, empath? What is that? Also, I think something they sometimes forget with Thailand is there's a lot of Muslims, man. That's never really known. Like in South Thailand, they are very devout Muslims, man. We're an empath. We could be crazy sometimes. Lots of empathy. Yes. Oh. One thing that's for sure, Thais are very proud of being Thai. Every day at 8 p.m. and 6 p.m., the national anthem Jeez. is played on Lao speakers. Everybody it's like stop. more American than the Americans stop themselves. And second and stand there until it's over. Anyway, the makeup of Thailand is very interesting too. And here's how it kind of breaks down. Look at this guy. Tommy, you can travel a lot as an older dude if you are a diplomat as a profession. Thank you for that tip. Chat, when you're old, become a diplomat. For one, Listen to Thailand John Travolo and chat. And the government officially recognizes 62 ethnic communities naturally found within the country. The largest group of peoples, of course, are the ethnic Thai people at somewhere around 86% of the population. However, it's a little more complicated. The Thais are kind of broken up into specific groups. The largest ones being the Korat Thai or the Central Thai people that are spread throughout most of the central parts of the country. They make up about 39% of the population. From there, the next largest group would be the Isan or Thai Lao, mostly found near the border of Lao. They make up Thank about you, my dude. Thank you, man. population. From there, As an American up soldier, you can travel a lot too. And Southern Thai at about 9%. <clears throat> The largest non-Thai groups, though, would be Malays, mostly in the border with or Malaysia, at about 4%. Soldier, Cambodian or Khmer so peoples, mostly Kappa. in the border with Cambodia, make up about 2%. And about 8% of the country belongs to other groups, a huge chunk of this being Chinese. Thailand currency is... I always think a lot of Westerners live there, like old retired people. But they use the types of ANC plug outlets. Yeah, like and normal people. Is on the left side of the road. Yeah, they simply just okay, did it not because like most of their neighbors were doing it, and they just wanted to join along. Uh, not because of British influence. Never colonized. Never. Now, here's where things Never. get a little confusing. Thailand actually has the largest Chinese community outside of Thailand at somewhere around 10 million. Well, Chinese people probably all like, man, China is so unfun. Let's go to fun China, a.k.a. Thailand, about a seventh of where the you population. can actually be However, normal. this group of Chinese people or Sino-Thai people are actually fully assimilated into Thai society and often just call themselves Thai. They are mostly from southern China called Baochu in the Guangdong province. After years of intermingling, geneticists speculate that somewhere around 40% of the population of Thailand could have at least one Chinese ancestor. Today, most of them have actually adopted Thai last names or at least use Chinese last names and add Thai words to the end due to a law that states Thank that you, people are not allowed to have Thank the you. same last name if they are not related. Well, in any case, the Thai language is completely different from Chinese. It's actually part of the Thai language group which is related to Shan language in Myanmar and Lao in Laos. How much Lao can you guys understand? I'd say like 60%. 60, 70 percent. Would you say Lao people can understand Thai better? Of course, yeah. Yeah. because they. That's that's probably like well, like a German feels with like Dutch people. You kind of understand them in a weird way, or like all the Scandinavians understand each other. Yeah, entertainment and stuff. So the Thai alphabet or Abu Gida is made up of 44 consonant symbols and 16 vowel indicators. Every Thai person. Now who the fuck understands this shit? Jeez. That go with the 44 consonants of the Thai is that Harrison Ford? G, chicken to H owl. Otherwise, Thai is a tonal language spoken with five tones, meaning you can make an entire sentence using just one syllable, but changing the tone. For example. Oh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so that's, that's is like, my 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 no so doesn't burn. I love this one. Pa 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 pa. Wait, what? My no so doesn't burn. I love this Wait. one. Pa. 
throwing forest onto that sugar daddy ป่าป้าป้าป่า alright ส้มหิวข้าวเลยนะขับไปเลยไม่ต้องไปส่งรีบ้านขับตามกันไปเลยเนี่ย I'm gonna add subtitles <laughs> now officially Thailand has freedom of religion however the vast majority are Buddhist uh, 95 yeah 90... I thought more Muslims because the the Thai people I was living with they were all Muslims Of the I never. I didn't This think they were that. This is a country with the second highest Buddhist population in the world Low. after China, even though China is only about 20% Buddhist. It's interesting though. Thai Buddhism has a lot of traditional Thai folklore and Hindu overlap within it. Within temples and shrines, you might see many Hindu or folk deities depicted, like Brahma. What is the spirit house? You put it there, and they do some kind of ritual, you know, ceremony to bless in that house. For a blessing. Yeah, for a blessing, so that that spiritual figure will. Protect your home. It's like something to stream. Find them everywhere in Thailand, and they usually give them offerings like flowers, incense, fruits, and for some reason, a lot of them. Yeah, I, I always felt like instead of weird joke, instead of bad joke, I always felt like it's a joke, Twitch admin. I always felt like homeless people have it very easy in Buddhist countries because there's shrines everywhere. We're fucking free shit, man. Strawberry fun. I stole a lot of. That's like a thing what? I see <laughs> The color yeah. red, right? Mm -hmm. Thailand also has a heavy culture of short-term Buddhist ordination in which many men are encouraged to serve as monks for a period Which is a beautiful time. thing. I think that's beautiful. You have these shrines everywhere. You put stuff and then someone else can take it. I think that's actually beautiful. You stole what? I told that old story. I stole money from Buddha. I had to. It's an old story. I don't want to say it again. I had to steal from Buddha, man, to survive. Monks are not allowed to touch women unless if it's like an emergency, like if their mom is dying or something. Oh, Now, going to Thailand, you will notice how much the royal family is integrated into daily life. Every neighborhood has a shop and sell approved images of them. Yeah, they are all ultra all serious all about this shit. We won't get too much into it because it'll take way too long to explain. It's a hot button issue amongst the people, but essentially, Thailand has Still from had monks? many The story, shh, quickly. Old girlfriend, ex-girlfriend from Germany came to China. Me and her go to Sanya, South China. We get scammed by friends that take all our money. Me and her want to go to a temple. We take the taxi to the temple. Taxi driver scams us, takes all our money. I'm out of money. Zero money. So we're in the temple and we're like, fuck, we're fucked. We have no money. How are we going to get home? So I'm looking around and I suddenly see a Buddha statue, right? I see Buddha. And right here is a little bowl, and it's full of fucking money. It just lays there. And me and her, we were really mad that day, because all the Chinese were scamming us. They were like, oh, white people, give me 500 yen. Uh, uh, and everybody just scams you. And I'm like, listen, first of all, they scammed us, and Buddha will want us to have this, because we're actually kind people, unlike these scammers. So I, all day long, I was walking by these Buddha statues like, Oh, 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 and I finally had money for the taxi ride home and the nice meal in the evening, okay? Buddha wanted that. I am not ashamed. China, all these Chinese fuckers were scamming the fuck out of me, taking all my money. And Buddha saved me, man. The one true religion, I'm telling you. monarchy related incidences within their history. We're not gonna get much more into this. If you want to say stuff, write it in the comments. Otherwise, so that was you? <laughs> move on. Okay? No comment. No comment. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's move on. Okay. What better We already knew the story. Some people on YouTube's channel and didn't know the story, okay? You fuck. To move on, Paul. Mm -hmm. Sport. Sports, yes. Sports. And with they, what do they in sports? Muay Thai and cricket? Yeah, here's art with the sports part. It's geography sports time. <laughs> One thing I always wonder, just a weird thought, why is he always involving characters? He probably has to give them money, right? Wouldn't he make more money if he just stays alone with two characters? Uh, it's a weird thought. I know it's weird, but I always He's wonder. So light. All right, so let's start off with the Asian Games. Bangkok has hosted them more than any other country in Southeast Asia. Moreover, Thailand is hosting. They're just actors and collabs. Hosted more SEA games as well. Thailand also ranks high in badminton competitions, which is actually one of my favorite sports. I like badminton a lot. Now you look like a badminton player, mate. You know that? No. When I was in high school, I used to play a lot. For some reason, I always liked hitting that little birdie. Pun punish that little thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> Thailand usually ranks number one in Southeast Asia for football. Soccer. These two guys here are probably the most famous I actually don't know them. footballers in Thailand. Alexander Albin is actually the only F1 racer known in Thailand. Thailand in total has 35 medals in the Olympics, and 10 of those are actually gold. I don't know why I just did five. 
five times two. <laughs> two five. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> the three events that Tyler oh, has man. done well in the Olympics, weightlifting, boxing, and taekwondo. And speaking of hey, good martial arts. sports, the moment you... But you never seen a Thai guy in the UFC. That's weird. I hope we see a Thai Bob guy in the UFC one day. It'd be cool. Best sport ever from Thailand, Muay Thai known as the art of eight limbs. You can hit with your fists, your shins, your elbows, and your knees. And then pow, the match begins. But do not touch people on the top of the head. It's a big no-no in Thai culture. Oh, speaking of fighting, let's talk about Krabi Krabon. This is a traditional Thai weapon. Oh, so they have uh, lopping weeaboos also in Thailand. Martial art form. The bodyguards of the royal family must be highly trained in this martial art form as well. Competitions and performances are really cool to watch. And finally, Thailand used to take part in this unique elephant polo competition known as the King's Cup. In 2018, though, Poor fuck the elephants, the man. That's fucking bullshit. After complaints filed by PETA, no more. Yeah, I agree with that well, shit, man. complained about the elephants, but not the horses. Hmm. What's up with that, PETA? Tarchin the horses have a big lobby. I actually know in our friend circle a horse trainer girl and she told us this man. The, the horse shit has a big lobby because the rich fuckers, they love horses. Horse, everything of horses, man. So they are lobbying Thank massively you know, for that stuff. Now is never gonna be ended by PETA. That's it for me. Cheers. Thank you, Art. Well, fun fact about Thais. We're very competitive with beauty pageants. On any given day, there will be probably be some kind of beauty pageants going on with different types of people. And there's a lot of expectations. So much to talk about with Thailand's culture. So with that, here's Random Hannah to give you just a few more general overview factoids of. One sec, he's gonna make this thing. Name three famous Thai people. The main character in the raid? Uh. Alexander Alban. That's an F1 driver. I don't know that guy. I don't know F1. Ariana Grande. Of Thai culture. Alban, the king. Hi guys, it's good to be back. And remember, you can get a random Hannah shirt at Geography Night. And you need to calm down, chat. Brief. Who is the one? I'm sweating. Look at chat. Look at chat. One guy is gonna. Wow, no one. Okay, there it is. It was just a bit lagging behind. Okay. He's wearing it. First thing, in Thailand, if you are on the phone receiving Thai text, you might see the number five a lot. That means ha ha ha. Thai, the number five is yeah. pronounced ha. So they're Thank really you, uh, man. <laughs> Does the Thai fighter from Star Wars count? Actually, good joke. I'm impressed. Actually, good joke for once, man. Every Thai at birth yeah. is given a nickname in addition to the regular name. It's based on an old superstition that evil spirits or beasts at. These evil spirits are apparently constantly on the lookout for newborn children, and these nicknames. She looks like Alison Hannigan uh, from How I Met Your Mother in a bit. You know what I mean? Apparently, Sadly. confuse them. Common nicknames include things like tadpole, fat, mouse, swan, and orange. At special occasions, you will often looks like see Joe Biden. wearing traditional clothing. For women, a common thing you can see is the sing. It's an ankle-length silk tube skirt. And for men, you can find a chong kraven. Oh, that looks super chill, actually, man. Like, your balls have a lot of breathing room? Damn. Dude, I, yeah, just yesterday I was driving around and there was a bus station and there was people going to... What's that? Yes, and they go, they're Muslims and they go to the Muslim thing, okay? And they have these white dresses and I always envy them because they have so much breathing room down here, man. I should become a Muslim. Body, silk wrap, pants garment. There are so many quirks and customs in Thailand. I want Everybody a pair of those pants. You want to talk about Thai pants? As I was living in China, uh, I was living with... There was Thai people, French people, Germans and some Japanese and Koreans. And I was very close to Thai people. I love these people, man. The nicest people ever. And on Christmas, we did um, the thing where everybody pulls an, a name and has to give a gift to someone. And the one who pulled me was Irfan. Irfan from Thailand, man. He was a Muslim. And he always called me Great Warrior because I was in a fight club. And he gifted me this pants from Thailand. He gifted me that. I still have that after all, all these years. This is from a Muslim type person. He gave me this boy type pants, which doesn't fit me at all. There is no way in hell it fits me. Um, but that's a very nice uh, artifact. I want to keep forever, man. Where you'll find the Nung Kwok. It's the beckoning lady statue that is said to bring business and love. She always looks good. 
The number nine is considered lucky. In Asia, they love numbers, man. They're really important about this. Huge here. Taxis and bus drivers have altered. Yeah, it's so much. Plant culture or Maidu is a huge thing here as well. It dates back to the Ayutthaya period, in which people needed to keep plants and crops portable in case floods washed them away. Thai people are obsessed with aromatherapy. They're most popular in the form of herbal bombs or nasal sprays. This right here is called a yadon. Thank you, Giacomo. I remember, sorry, I remember these stories. One of my best friends in China was Kevin. Kevin was a guy from South France and maybe genuinely, all no joke, the coolest guy I've ever met. He was this good looking, sexy, super intelligent and eloquent guy from France, right? He was just a fucking giga chat, man. His dad had like a golf course and he will just have a lot of money. And I remember he pulled, this was so funny, man. This is such a funny story. And he's this fucking alpha chat from France. And he pulls in the in the Christmas present thing. There was this one girl in the Thai group. She was so cute. She was 150 and she would wear a hijab and stuff. And she was this really cute Muslim Thai girl, right? And every ni night we would be like, what the fuck do we buy her? And we, what would you buy her? She was this really small, ultra cute Thai Muslim girl that was really the most Muslim. What the fuck do you buy her for Christmas? And it was... We did not know what to do, man. And I kind of forgot what he got her. I really forgot. Maybe it's just some, some you know, rituals, what all these people always... High heels? Whoa. Uh, we, we never knew a K-pop album. A t-shirt. Yeah, you guys are funny. But it was really hard to understand what... A Koran... <laughs> It was really hard to know what we, we should, uh, what he should get her, man. Pam for sending this on Fan Flag Friday. You will see people with these shoved up their noses everywhere in Thailand. Did you shove this in your nose and then give it to me? Not that one. I took the green one. Thais are also really into astrology. I'm an Aquarius. I don't know what that means, but this even ties into every day of the week. Each day of the week has a color code pertaining to each astrology Jeez. god. So you might find people wearing more of a That's certain copium. color on a certain day. <laughs> In addition, Bible. there are a series of taboos and traditions that follow each day. For example, on Wednesday, you're not allowed to cut things, so often barber shops are closed on Wednesdays. And fuck? finally, Thailand has so many festivals and events they celebrate. It would take forever to list them all, but here. There's a really crazy festival, a moonlight festival or something. Something, people should know that like the whole fucking every hipster in the world goes there and it's a massive party on this beautiful beach in the moonlight it's very famous what is that called not mooncake no 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 it's like a rave with fucking thousands of people moonlight so the half moon festival there yeah are a few of the i went to that magic tattoo festival full moon festival party of lights the monkey buffet festival cool. I to go to that one. buddhist festivals like Buddha's thank you Uzai and Lipusat. Lipusat. The largest are you tight the most popular one though is the songkran festival it is celebrated throughout all of southeast asia people shoot water guns and splash each other with water and everyone gets soaked i know who i would shoot a water gun at my husband because he is hot that's your husband? Damn. Bro, you... Yeah, he has a ring. Well, Chet, I'm sorry. I know it hurts. But she's married to that guy. Damn, this guy is... is uh, he, he better pay attention, man. He... 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 He, draw ace, he has drawn aces. <laughs> Anyways, whatever. Here's Keith's music segment. Well, Subscribe to my GG. YouTube channel, Anna Panna. Oh. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Keith here. I am back in the wonderful state of Florida. Just Thank you, Lazy Boy. Florida. Thank you, man. A million times better than California. But anyways, Thailand knows music, and it seems everything in life incorporates it. Even before Muay Thai match, Yo. they play music as fighters do their ritual dances. Thais will probably say the two largest traditional styles are Luk Tung and Moor Lam. Luk Tung is a country folk style with lyrics that reflect the trials and tribulations of rural life. Every Thai person will say these people are probably the most iconic folk artists. Otherwise, Moor Lam is mostly performed in the northeast part of the country, close to Laos. It is described as being folk but faster with a funk feel. A funky feel if you Keep will. Mary Hanna, but this is not like a TV show where you want to marry certain characters off. Such as these, I'm going to point to this list right here. Thailand dance is also pretty crazy to watch, especially Kone. It is Thailand's traditional mask dance done with golden costumes. He can read really well, yeah. Who doesn't look gold? Everybody loves gold. In fact, most Thai people are capable of doing complex double-jointed dance gestures. I don't know, is that, 
Does this mean I'm double joining? Otherwise, since the 90s, Thai pop or T pop has been ever growing in the oh, music. Oh, T pop is a thing? Some top performers you suggested include this list right here. And before I go, these are, these one are band in particular that what? I must mention because, well, I'm Keith and I love metal bands, and we all know this, but at this point, um, there's a band from Thailand which is called Retrospect, and they have a song called trade really great song really great band uh the sumerian core era of like bands like born of osiris and those influences spread throughout the world and but anyways that's it for me thank you so much all to the thai subscribers you guys are really great and uh, that's it for me thank you keith well that was a lot a lot what are your favorite festivals of thailand well it's in Gok, Gok Pangan, yeah? i just talked about that yeah the full moon festival Kupagang. insane festival man if you're a normie that likes to dance you should go there it's fucking kinda mental like the Burning Man type party, or even Coachella, or like if you it's love right at music, a, a beautiful beach. Definitely, you would definitely go to the full moon party in okay. Gopalan. Well, one thing that Thailand is definitely known for is the way how they interact with the rest of the world. Which brings us to the final chapter of this episode, <laughs> the Sumerian Core Metal. So, due to their location and culture, Thailand has quite a history of branching out both to their neighbors and abroad. One thing's for sure, Thailand has definitely made themselves known throughout the world. Here's how it kind of plays out. For one, Thailand is of course a huge international tourism hotspot, so of course everyone from- Which country in the world has the most income from tourism? Do you guys know? I will guess... F France? France. France? Syria? France, huh? I guess France. Most people say France. I will guess France, yeah. From Australia to Austrians love visiting, especially during peak season during the- what, would, what the fuck with these Austrians, man? It's just all these fat white dudes are like, Yeah, I'm going to go to the metal to make me uns was klar. Yeah, I'm going to December and February. What the, the fuck, Austrians? Is the best. Nonetheless, no shocker, China alone outnumbers all of them combined, taking right. up over a quarter of the entire tourist demographic. Obviously, as mentioned, Thailand has the largest Chinese population in Thailand. It is actually the USA? You googled it? No way. You googled it? It's USA by far. Wow, I would have never guessed that. It's USA, Spain, France. I would have never guessed that. USA is the biggest tourist? What? Who the fuck wants to... What the fuck? I asked for what does he have to see China, in America? You can shoot guns, sure. Intermarry and mix with Thai people. The only hiccup in relations Maybe with that's China why. took place in the 50s when this former prime minister instituted lots of anti-Chinese campaigns and restrictions. Also, occasionally is that China the guy from like four? Yeah. And it keeps a close eye whenever Taiwan wants to get close to Thailand as well. But today <gasps> they are close. They share numerous bilateral. 210 billion dollars a year for USA tourism. Wow. Washington, New York City, Hawaii, LA, San Francisco, Yellowstone, Grand Canyon, Florida. I, I get that, but I never thought that that beats stuff like France. Wow, that's that's crazy, man. Agreements like a free trade zone. China is their largest import partner. Their militaries cooperate, and the two are cool with each other. With that, India comes in, and it's more of a historic and cultural bond that dates back thousands of years within the Indosphere. Not only do the Buddhist faith migrate out of northeastern India, some argue Nepal. Let's not get into that. But the Thai language also borrows a substantial amount of words from Sanskrit, as well as Pali, the sacred language of Theravada Buddhism. India has very close extradition. Well, tourism ranking so France is first by just visitors. Especially in the India Myanmar Thailand Highway Project, and they have a oh, growing education a exchange program. The U.S. has had relations with Thailand since the 19th century, when the Treaty of Amity and Commerce was signed in 1833. Therefore, making them the first nation. The, the thing is that USA has a lot of internal tourism, which leads to a lot of money. Mm. ...in Asia to have formal diplomatic relations. I mean, as an American, you can just travel in your own country, right? Like as a European. You, France, Italy, England, everything, right? But as an American, you you can travel internally a lot. With the U.S., yes, even before China. From there, relations this have only grown. So big. Later, Thailand joined CEDO, which led to the Rusk Tanat Agreement. In 2003, they were labeled a major non-NATO ally. However, the closest inner circle to Thailand, though, would have to be their fellow ASEAN nation countries. Granted, they've had quite a few historical wars with the Burmese, but nonetheless, best friends. Malaysia is the second largest tourist demographic, and many have family just over the border in 
in South Thailand. Indonesia is kind of like a mediator between tourism. them and any drama they might have on the border with Cambodia. The Philippines shares a lot of similar cultural tropes with Thailand. It's almost like just replace the Buddhist backdrop with a Catholic one and they are almost indistinguishable. When it comes to their best friend within this group though, nearly every single Thai person I've ever talked to has mentioned the same country, Laos. Laos. Laos is like the little sister of Thailand that has a slightly different way of doing Laos is one of these countries I know nothing about, man. I just know the, the infrastructure in Hoi Forte is trash and you can't walk through it. Things, but Don't overall, shit about they totally Laos. get each other. It all started back in the 15th century. It's like everybody always talks about Thailand and, and, and Vietnam because of history, but no one talks about uh, Laos and Cambodia. Ayutthaya Kingdom. And, you know, despite being under French Indochina it's and still having communist. some on the border with Thailand and claiming that the Emerald Buddha was theirs and later installing a government that kind of favored Vietnam. What the fuck is the Emerald Buddha? Emerald Buddha. Whoa. That's a real thing? Cool, right? Vietnam. Regardless, they are still considered the closest relatives within the area and have deep ties. They speak nearly intelligible languages. They One are of Laos is contaminated with landmines. And after you peel back is all the true? layers of historical trauma, they cannot deny that in the end, they will always be family and care for each other. In conclusion, you're the Thai people. I'm going to head out. You guys take it. Ready, set, go. Long tail boats, street vendors, lots of good food, a lot of beautiful people, and a lot of smiles. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's pretty fun to party. Fun people to hang out with. Lots of fortune tellers. Empaths. Sensitive. <laughs> Again. <laughs> so go back. That was the episode. Hope you had a good one. Thank you guys for joining. Ooh, Thank you. Single Togo. Sometimes I wish that at least for like a little mini segment they would look at like negative stuff in a country. I mean, that's a bit toxic maybe, but.